Welcome to this uh, amazing time we're going to have together here with uh, Justin and Broke and we are going to talk about false spirit in the church. Uh, I did a video not long time ago where I talked about the false spirit that have crept into the church. And we have got a lot of response because of that video and, and we need to talk about it. We need, a, need to talk more about what is happening in the body of Christ today, how false spirit has crept in and how all the manifestation you see is not a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Some of them are demonic and need to be cast out. And, uh, and, but also the Holy Spirit is working and it's very difficult for people to understand that the two spirits can work at the same time. Uh, Paul in Corinthians 11, 2 Corinthians 11, he talked about the, he talked to the Christians, to the church. And one time he said that, um, I, I'm afraid like Satan, the servant, deceived Eve, that you have been deceived. And they have been deceived by people preaching another Jesus and giving another spirit. So it's actually possible to be in the setting of the church. Mm -hmm. And here another gospel, we need to read in Galatians also. Here another gospel, hear about another Jesus and receive another spirit. Mm -hmm. When they say receive another spirit, I'm, I'm sure they will not call the spirit Krishna or Buddha or, or call the spirit something el else. They call it the Holy Spirit. But the question is, is it the Holy Spirit? And the Bible says we need to test everything. We need to test it. And the Bible talks about spirit of discernment. We need to discern things. But we want to talk about that. And Brooke and Justin are with us here. And uh, their story is, uh, I will just introduce them short and then they're going to tell a lot. Their story is you came from a non-Christian background, out in the world, was living a crazy life. Met her, you got married, UK, you started to study. It was in the Baptist congregation and you started in seminary and so on. And you received the Holy Spirit and you were present in the church, but you had the Spirit and life started to get changed. And then you received the Spirit and you just started this amazing life together. And at one time, you went to Africa. You, have, you came in charismatic church in, in America also, where you saw the false spirit or saw manifestations, mm -hmm. but it was first in Africa, it really became clear mm -hmm. that there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. So now I would like to let you talk a lot. Okay. So yeah, so I was raised in a, a Baptist Christian home, um, and I went to church every Sunday, and I was talked about, you know, hell and heaven, and you don't want to go there, and the right things to do, and the not right things to do, but never was described or understood the Holy Spirit and who He was. You heard a lot about God and Jesus, but the Holy Spirit wasn't really talked about. So at 23 years old, um, I gave my life to the Lord, and uh, about four months after I had repented, I remember there was something lacking in my life and I didn't know what it was because no one was talking to me or discipling me much about what it was that was lacking, but I knew it was something and I would be seeking the Lord constantly reading scripture and I started to read and I said, there's something I'm missing because I don't feel like I'm seeing what I'm reading. And I was just crying out one day and um, at that very moment, I remember just the presence of God came in that room so real and so clearly. And all of a sudden I started to pray in tongues. It just kind of like came out of me. And I stopped myself at first and I was like, oh, I was taught that tongues were not for today. I was taught that they were from the devil now, if it was to happen today. So I start rebuking this thing that I had just received. Uh, but at the same time, every time I would go into the secret place with the Lord and pray and seek him and I'd get into prayer, it would come out of me. And as I started reading scripture, I'm like, this is what I should be doing as a believer. And this is a sign that means I am sealed by the Holy Spirit. And I was a little perturbed because I'm thinking I was lied to, you know, a little frustrated. Um, but then I started to operate in this gift, but I didn't tell anybody because I didn't know anybody else that was doing it. I knew my husband would not agree with it. I knew my friends would think I was weird. So I just practiced this in my time with the Lord. So time went on and I realized my husband was just a religious man and did not know the true Jesus. He just knew him in his mind. And so our relationship got very difficult. 
Uh, and so I started to pray for him that the Lord would do something in his life because as I started reading scripture, I would lay hands on sick people. They would get healed. I would prophesy things would happen. It really messed him up in his head and he would get frustrated with me and ask me to quit. But I'm like, I can't. This is how I live. And um, not long after that, about four years of praying for him, he receives the Holy Spirit. And at that time, we had this dream in our heart to become missionaries and go overseas and save the lost and go into the villages and things like that. So after he received the Spirit, the Lord said, now you're ready. Because for 16 months, I thought I was ready. And I was ready, mm. but he was getting us both ready. Mm, that's right. So as soon as he received the Spirit, his whole life changed. Um, he went from a man who struggled with sin and always stumbling and walking in no power uh, he would share messages at, messages at church, and they sounded great because he was really good with words, but there was no power. No one's life was changing. Um, and I would say something so simple, and people would come up, like, weeping. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's the difference, mm. you know? And um, so he received the Spirit. We go into the nations, and we went to the Philippines for a bit, and we ended up in Africa. And while we were in the Philippines, we were seeing people get slain in the spirit, but in our hearts, we knew something was off. Like they were hitting the ground, they were screaming and they were yelling. And in our charismatic background, we were taught, this is, uh, this is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, because coming from, mm. from the, the more Baptist traditional background, even right. me from the world into the more traditional mm. background, and then uh, experiencing the spirit like I did, uh, I, I then was was kind of open to say, okay, God, you've broken out of my box. Uh, I, I don't I don't want to close you off in any area. Uh, so we were still in this learning place, and uh, but then we started to slowly see things that 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 didn't sit right in our spirits, and and but the people around us were confirming that this is the work of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I remember one specific instance in in the Philippines when I prayed for a woman, and 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 she began to scream, just mm. the scream of terror. And in my head, I'm going, why, if, mm. if God is touching somebody, why in the world would they be screaming with terror? And so this led us into our, our, our next trip where we but, went. But it, so you prayed. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and, and the reaction was that. Yes. Not, now we are going to, of course, uh, we are going to talk about what happened. But today, mm. yeah. at that moment, what did you thought it was? You were not sure. I wasn't sure. Okay, but today, she, what do you think happened? Oh, I, I know what happened. The Holy Spirit was, in, was there, yeah. but what he was doing was driving something unclean out. So yeah. this woman was manifesting yeah. a demon. But at the time, I wasn't aware mm. that this was happening, number one, because we were in the church. Mm. So in my head, in my understanding, because we're in the church, this woman's a Christian, there's no way she could mm. need deliverance. Yeah. Mm. So when she screamed and fell to the ground, the only thing I could do was say, thank you, Lord, and walk away. Yeah. Now looking back... Mm. I weep over that yeah. because I knew what I needed to yeah. do in that situation was continue to minister to that woman because she needed freedom. Yeah. And, and before we talk about what happened later, I want to say to people out there, like, we want to do a video here to create a good balance in it because right. you came, like many other people, from a non-Holy Spirit filled background yeah. Yeah. and you almost rebuked the Holy Spirit in the beginning. <laughs> You're like, oh, I speak in tongues. Go away. Like, what, yeah. what is happening here? And so there is, on one side, a lot of people in the body of Christ today who are, have a wrong understanding of the Holy Spirit, who, yeah. who, is, who is going against the work of the Spirit. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And then we have on the other side, some people who receive everything as being from the Holy Spirit. That's right. And to find that balance is, can be very difficult oh. because when you come from there, like you did, you saw that you already been deceived one time. Right. Yeah. So you don't want to go in the same right. <laughs> deception right. again. You think, right. oh, okay, I don't want to be religious. Yeah. I don't have to be religious. I don't want to be religious. Yeah. Let's just receive okay, everything. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we hope that this video can help people mm -hmm. out there to find that balance in it. Mm -hmm. um, so you prayed, woman in Philippines fall down, was screaming. Mm -hmm. You fought. You had question about it, what is happening, yeah. but it was first later mm -hmm. you start to see more of that. What was that? That's right. So when we went to Africa, uh, we went to, to be trained as missionaries, and, and us being in that atmosphere with other people, we thought, well, everybody's here for this same reason, so everybody's believers, followers mm -hmm. of Jesus, and they're here mm -hmm. to be trained. Uh, so there was some ministry that took place in the beginning, and I remember one specific instance where I watched a woman pray and prophesy over somebody, 
And then maybe a couple days later, we were in, in, in class in a, in a learning environment and she falls to the ground and begins to shake and manifest foaming from the mouth and growling. And it was a Christian. Mm -hmm. Yes. On a Bible school. Mm -hmm. She had just Always. been praying and ministering to someone uh, mm -hmm. soon before that. Yeah. And I remember going to one of the leaders and saying... Uh, and this was her second time at this school. Uh, yes, so this was okay. actually her second time. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, she came this time with her husband. But um, I remember going to one of the leaders and, and asking him, I said, I, said, I, don't, I don't really understand demonic uh, possession or, or people being demonized, but can a Christian have demons? Mm -hmm. And he said... Oh, absolutely not. You can be oppressed, but you mm. cannot be possessed and using mm. that. So I said, okay. I said, well, what, what would you consider a Christian having a demon? Um, I said, how about if they're foaming from the mouth and they're growling? And he said, oh, that's definitely a demon. I said, well, I saw that happen yesterday and I, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. Um, and, and he was like, well, I guess, I guess maybe they can. So this is where my, my theology kind of started to shift and change because I was seeing Christians also, you know, needing, needing deliverance, not necessarily receiving deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so as time went on, um, this, this, this particular uh, organization that we were being trained with uh, had a strong, a strong focus on, on being drunk in the spirit and really experiencing the manifestations, um, kind of using, using the terminology of, of, of joy. So using mm. as an opportunity that the more joyful we are, the more we experience the joy of the Holy Spirit, mm. the stronger Christians we're going to be. But there was something the whole time going on in my spirit and I know in her spirit and even our children that were there. One of our, our, our sons, our middle son came to us and said, Dad, I, I, there's, there's something not right. I don't, I don't think this is the Holy Spirit. Mm. How, how old was he then? He was six. Six, six years, years old, and, yeah. And we, so we have a six years old who came and said, Daddy, I think there's something this off. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we, we had a deliverance just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and at one time we saw the deliverance and then at one time it went from a real deliverance mm -hmm. where with a lot of flesh, mm -hmm. yeah. there was a woman yeah. who was screaming and doing things. And, and, and it just changed. And as soon as he changed, went into the flesh, mm -hmm. I could see in the kids they became afraid. Yes. And yes. I didn't like it. And I can, hey, stop, stop, stop now. Hey, hey, you got so free. Didn't you? Yeah. But what is happening here? Yeah. And it's so interesting because I have seen deliverance, but when God is working, there is no fearful. That, there's right. no fear. There is no... Disrupt, and people don't get di distracted by it in a bad way and fearful and even the kids. But yeah. here you, you saw this was this was these were the things that were starting to um, cause me to be almost divided in my heart to say, yeah. is this from the Lord or is this not? Yeah. Um, because like you said before, th th this, this group of people, it's not like they're doing all bad things. Yeah. It's not like they're all the way over here. Um, they're, they're caring for the yeah. sick. They're caring for the poor. We saw blind eyes open. We yeah. saw healing take That's place. Right. Um, people in love with Jesus. So there was, there, was, there was many good things. But then on the other mm -hmm. side, there was this, this area uh, where, you know, our children are, are, are fearful and they're seeing these manifestations. Mm -hmm. And just to give you one example, um, we would go into a class and, and, and there would be an option. Do we want to teach? Do we want to learn from the Word of God? Or do we want to just drink from the Spirit? Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times people want, you know, young people, they, they want the they manifestations. Want they want to come up and be prayed yeah. for. They want to be right. slain in the spirit. Yeah. And this was the first time that we really uh, experienced the, the, the holy laughter mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and seeing people just laugh for hysterically for, yeah. for 45 minutes or for an hour plus. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, some of these things we were seeing in our children were very frightened by it and very scared. And, and we're wondering, uh, what do we do here? Because again, we, we want to be open to what mm -hmm. God wants mm -hmm. to do. We don't want to be judgmental. But if this is not of God, I also want to protect my family from that. And I want, want to say to people out there, when we talk about those things, uh, also for me, we are coming from a a place where we did it all, where That's we are right. part of it. I have been part of all of that. Yeah. I've, and, and we are not coming in a, in a condemning way to those people who are there, but we oh, come to right. say, hey, we, there's a, we have a big discern because mm -hmm. we were in it, but we also saw the fruit of it, mm -hmm. that there was a lot of flesh, there was a lot of emotion. And, and if we just take that picture, do you want to get drunk or do you want to learn the word? 
The word is the transformation. Right. The word is the truth. The word is like a sword that's going to divide. The word is this. And, and I've just seen in some of those certain circles I was part of, the reason that made me leave that many years ago was I saw a lot of manifestations, I saw a lot of things, mm -hmm. but together with that I saw a lot of flesh. And, and I was thinking at one time, how can those people be so much under the presence of God? being in God's presence so much and still have so much bliss, have so much sin in their life and be so bound. I'm like, come on, if you, are, if God, you feel God so strong and are so close to God, there should be a transformation. Yeah. And, and that was the thing that kept make my eyes open to it. And, and I just start to discern it and start to see it. And uh, yeah. Because you see these people getting touched by the Holy Spirit per se, but their lives are never changing. Oh. They would get off the floor after laughing or whatever would take place, and then the next week they would call or you would see them, and they would be depressed or sad or bound by sin. And you're like, man, but every Sunday you get touched by the Holy Ghost, yeah. and you're on the ground rolling yeah. and laughing or you're yeah. weeping or whatever it may look yeah. like. I'm thinking if you're getting touched by the Lord, like you should be changing, you know. So, so. so you start to ask questions. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and, and your son mm -hmm. could see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes we need to hear the truth to the our child. Kid, <laughs> the child, kids and so what, what then happened? Like mm. how, how did it continue there? Yeah, so we, uh, while we were there, um, we would start to see all these people prophesy and do these really awesome things. But then at the same time, they uh, were coming to us for advice and asking us questions and, and seeking us for wisdom. And I'm thinking, but you're having these really cool encounters that we're not having. So like, aren't you this person that we should be looking to, to? But they were still bound by sin or bound by depression or anxiety or their marriage was really in shambles or whatever that may be. And so after a while, we started to realize like, okay, let's look at the word and see what the word says about what manifestations of the Holy Spirit look like. Um, and what manifestations of a demon looks like, yeah. because it's all in here. And so we did. And as I started to look at the times when the spirit would come upon a man or a woman, they would prophesy, they would pray in tongues, they would cry out, Abba, Father, they would yeah. um, be bold and um, they would walk in signs and wonders. Yeah. And then I started to look at the difference of what it looks like when someone was having a demonic manifestation. And it said it would, the demon would throw the person to the ground or in the water, or in the fire, or they would shake. And there was these spirits of, um, epilepsy and things like that that you would see this shaking and I'm like hmm okay what I'm seeing is not the Holy Spirit what I'm seeing is demonic and, so, and, and, and yeah. one thing about being drunk the Bible of course it, it's twist in the word but the Bible says we should not get drunk right. we should be sober, That's right, sober but then let's be filled by the Spirit mm -hmm. but filled by the Spirit is not, not like a like, try, try hey. to, could you imagine Jesus w right. walking around there, like, no, you would see a, a guy with, with, with one of the fruit of the Spirit is self control, right. uh, kindness, me, me, uh, all of that. And it's interesting because. I saw, together with the manifestation, I saw at that time, I saw people laying on the floor and manifested many years ago. Mm. And at one time I saw like, it was like sexual manifestation, mm. like, like, like fleshly thing came in. And, and I saw a mix of all of it. Yeah. And I'm like, what is happening? And I think about, if you talk about, uh, people often ask me about, uh, can Christians have demons? And, and my response is, of course, Yes. Mm -hmm. Should Christians have demons? No, no, of course not. But in the perfect world, mm -hmm. <laughs> people go to a strong, strong repentance. Mm -hmm. They receive the baptism of the water and get free from the old life. Mm -hmm. And they receive the Holy Spirit. Right. And in that, there is a deliverance. The old life is, is, is gone with. You are delivered. And it's a new life. Mm -hmm. So Christians should not have demons. Of course not. Yeah. But we have people who come into Christianity mm -hmm. without understanding true repentance, without burying the old life in baptism water, without the Holy Spirit, without being set free from those demons. Right. And if they never got set free, of course they will still it have yeah, it. Right. Um, then the whole thing about the Bible possess and and uh, what word you use? Christian can they be possessed, oppressed? Yeah. Um, 
it's a wrong translation, and there is a whole teacher like like it's like okay, we are demonized. That's right. And I'm like, can, can people be demonized? Mm -hmm. Can people be on attack? I would say, yeah. after I got Holy Spirit filled, I've been experienced attack. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the world is yeah. real. Right. But of course, it's not a position. And, but I would say, often, I, I don't think I've ever seen people be possessed. Mm -hmm. Right. Like right. those possessed, mm -hmm. they don't sit there in a meeting. That's those right. possessed in a mental hospital or place, we don't right. come near. That's right. So I think for me, I, I'm very simple. Okay, you people can believe what they want, but I'm, I'm like, okay, if you see a demon, cast it out. Right. If you see a demon, say, okay, do you believe in God? Yeah, I believe in God. Okay, then I, you cannot have demons. I'm like, if you see a demon, cast it out. Right. And those people who are very, very clear and say, Christian cannot have demons. I often say, okay, so you believe Christians cannot have demons? Yeah, Christians cannot have demons. Okay, then show me how do you cast demons out of non-Christians? Mm. Uh, I don't. No, you don't. Mm. <laughs> you don't cast demons out of anyone. Mm -hmm. right. Because as soon as you start to cast demons out, you will see that they're in the church, outside the church, they're in yeah. the pulpit. That's right. They're I'm, in the leadership. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I was reading uh, the story, you know, in Acts chapter 8, when we see Philip going to Samaria. Mm. And it hit me one day, because this very question uh, came up in my heart. And I thought to myself, if demons automatically left when you became a Christian, that would uh, totally eliminate the ministry of casting out demons. Mm. Jesus would have just instructed us to lead people to, to himself, to, to conversion, and then to baptize them. Yeah. And we wouldn't have to worry yeah. about That's it. Right. But the, the very fact that we have to cast out demons or we're commanded yeah. to tells us that they don't automatically yeah. leave. Yeah. Just because, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Right. And it's like for me, if you look at uh, a demon like, Demon can be the cause of things of depression, fear, but also physical sickness. Yeah, there sure. was a blind guy, a deaf, deaf, dumb guy in the Bible mm -hmm. who had a demon and the deaf, dumb demon left him That's and he could right. speak in here. Right. So let's say we have a guy here who, who has depression or a blind mm -hmm. or something that is caused by demonic. In that second, he become a Christian. If Christian cannot have demons, in that second, he become a Christian. That means that he's healed, mm -hmm. he's free. But we see that you can give your life to Jesus mm -hmm. and still walk with some of those baggets mm -hmm. until you get prayed for mm -hmm. yeah. and deal with that case. Right. But let's go back to you. So you, you start to see it and uh, what, what happened? Yeah. One, one particular thing I want to share is, uh, so our, our, our six-year-old son was, was very discerning mm -hmm. <laughs> and recognizing a lot of these things weren't of the Lord. Uh, but our oldest son, uh, was actually a little more involved, and he mm. actually wanted uh, to receive prayer. Mm. He saw some of the other people engaging, and mm. so he actually received prayer from uh, one of the leaders there. And when he did, he fell to the ground, and he began to laugh and roll. Mm. Uh, and I was watching this mm. this happen again in my heart, going, "What? Mm. You know, I what should I do? Because I don't I don't want to stop him from encountering mm. God, but right. also if it's not mm. God, I want to stop it." Um, and he looked as almost like he was in pain, like he was holding his stomach. So he had this encounter and he continued to roll and people came up to us and were like, that's so amazing that your son was touched, touched by God. Mm -hmm. Well, fast forward, we come home and uh, he had come up to us with a, a, a certain situation where he wanted to share the gospel with one of his, his friends his mm -hmm. age. And, and, and we, he seemed a little, a, a little shy and uncertain. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to pray for him first. And when we went to pray for him, he got really scared and told us to stop. That's right. And we said, buddy, wh what's going on? And he said, well, well, I'm starting to feel that same feeling when that man prayed for me in Africa, and I, I don't like it. it. Yeah. I didn't like it. Yeah. And I looked at her and said, whoa, this is, this yeah, is not because right. Because we asked the Holy Spirit to come and fill him with boldness so he could share this, the gospel to this friend of his. Yeah. And when the Spirit of God came upon him, whatever had attached itself to him in Africa mm -hmm started to not like the presence of the spirit. So he said, stop praying for me. And I said, why? He said, because I don't want that to happen again. I don't ever want it to happen again. So we said, son, it's nothing to be afraid of. Mom and dad know what to do. We're going to break this off right now in the name of Jesus. So we just commanded that spirit to leave. And we asked the Holy Spirit to come and fill him. And my son sat there on the couch and started to pray in tongues for the first time. So, so you are actually saying that he got uh, influenced by wrong spirit in a Bible school mm -hmm. by a Christian leader who laid mm -hmm. hands on him. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, 
This is just reality. That's and, and, and this is what is happening. And, and, and if we don't like to talk about it, don't make it disappear. That's right. It no. is a reality. And, and we have just seen that again and again. And, and as I said in one of the videos, we, one of the reasons I did a video a yeah. short time ago is because we meet more and more people who yeah. get a wrong spirit in the church. Yes. And many people in the beginning, and some people in the beginning think, oh, it's the Holy Spirit, it's, it's really good. But then, they start to feel like something off. Uh, the, the, the strongest example I have, it was a woman in Denmark who came to me some years ago. She came to a Christian meeting in Denmark and somebody laid hands on her and she was running around on the floor and, and, and so on. That thing became so much that she, for years, she could not attend any Christian meetings. She could not hear worship. As soon as she heard worship, she just felt, oh no, I cannot, like this is bubbling up in me. And, and, and it went and continued and continued. She, in the end, actually said that that raped her. Mm. There was like a demon that raped Taking her. Yeah. That's right. and, and it's really like shocking yeah. that it happened in the church. Then some people would say, no, no, it doesn't happen in the church. It is just because they had the wrong spirit already. And then in the church, somebody pray for them and it comes up. Mm -hmm. But you are six years old or how old he was, your son there. He didn't have a lot of wrong spirit. It happened there. And it's just a reality. And I would say, but again, if people see our videos, we often, we see people fall down. And people, hey, you do the same. The difference between my, me 15 years ago and today is that when people fall down 15 years ago, I did not know more. I was standing and say, oh, more oh, Lord, more yeah. Lord. Yeah. <laughs> and then I went to the next. Right. Now when people fall down, I sit down and say, come out in the name That's of Jesus, right. come out in the name of Jesus. And people don't often don't see that on the video when people mm. fall down. So the thing is the same. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very different. So, so we come home yeah. from Africa, we deal with our son in this way and our minds are racing and we're like, if our son could have something attached to him, who else, mm. you know, because um, he's innocent, you know. Um, so we started bringing a group of couples into our home, um, which we were living with my mom at the time. So we're meeting with them in their homes. They would come over to my mom's home and my mom would hear us share about proper baptism and what it really means. Um, she would hear us talk about proper repentance and what that looks like and receiving the Holy Spirit. And as she's listening to these things, um, one of the couples in our group and one of the guys in our group was like, I need to be baptized. I need to repent properly and I need to receive the Holy Spirit and things like that. And some freedom came through that. Um, so we baptized them and, and all those things. So my mom comes to us and says, I think it's, I think I need to be baptized. Like I've never heard it this way, but as I'm reading the scriptures, it's becoming very clear to me. This is true. And, and he was a church person. Yes, this yeah. my mom's been in church for 25 yeah. years at 25 the time. 25 years, but yeah. then I'm like, I, yeah. I never heard it this way. Yeah, so and, uh, she goes, when I was younger, she was in the church, and she truly repented of her mm, sins at mm. 25 years ago, because I remember her going from me going to my aunt's on the weekend so she could go to the bar to now she's at home with me and she's taking me to church and she's not smoking anymore and all these things. So her life changed a lot because she got a new conscience. Mm. She can no longer live in that sin, but she never dealt with her unforgiveness. Huh. No one ever talked to her about that. And she never dealt with um, certain things that just kind of came with her mm. into her new life. So she was baptized, but she just thought she had to do it for the congregation. It doesn't say that the eunuch in the desert was with one man mm. by himself. It mm. wasn't for a crowd, you know, it's for between you and the Lord and what he's doing in that posture of faith when you go under that water and come back up a new creation. So she's like, I think I need to be baptized. And I said, okay. So we meet her um, a week later or so at our friend's house at a pool. And the day before we met her, I'm praying and the Holy Spirit said to me, your mom's gonna get delivered tomorrow. It's not just a baptism. Mm. And I'm thinking my 62 year old mom who's been in the church for 25 years is going to get delivered. What in the world is that gonna look like? And I said something to him and he's like, I heard the same thing. And mm. I said, okay, well, I don't know what we're going to do when it ha does happen, but we'll figure it out. And so we get to the water the next day and I told my mom, I said, we're going to share the gospel with you like you've never heard it before. Because anytime we baptize somebody or mm. if they're being rebaptized, it's because they missed something of the gospel the mm. first time mm. that they didn't understand mm. and they're still struggling with things. So you need to rehear the gospel, mm. the proper gospel. She said, okay. So we shared the gospel with her and she starts to 
properly repent of her sins. I mean, just the presence of God comes and she starts to confess things, things to her daughter she probably didn't think she would ever confess. And I'm just weeping because I'm like, this is the beauty of truth. This is where freedom begins, mm. is that repentance. Mm. And I said, okay, mom, now that you're done, we're going to baptize you. And so we put her under the water and she comes up out of the water and she starts to like drunken stumble in the water. And I'm thinking, okay, in my charismatic circle, they would say, this is Jesus, but this is not Jesus. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, Justin, just with this righteous anger said, every unclean spirit, you come out of her right now. And my 62 year old mother cripples over in the water and starts to vomit and scream and thrash in the water. And I'm like, okay, it's not the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We've been right in our hearts this whole time. And so we start casting this thing out. It took us a bit of time, but after that time was over, she got completely free. And she said at the very end, when she let out this last scream, something crawled out of her body and she could see it. And it was dark and it was ugly. And that had been what had been living there for 30, 40 years. Who knows how long? Mm -hmm. And um, we said, well, mom, now that you're free, the Bible says you must fill that empty place because if not, they'll come back. Mm -hmm. And she said, fill me up. Like I've been crying out for the Holy Spirit for two years. Please ask him to come. So we asked the Holy Spirit to come. And my mom gets filled and she starts praying in tongues. Mm. Um, no one prompted her. No one told her she had to do it. It just mm. came out of her. And she looked at me and she said, this is what the love of God feels like. Mm. And I said, yes. And she said, and this means that he approves of me. And I said, absolutely. Mm. She said, for two years, I was feeling rejected by God. But it's because I was so consumed with other spirits that I could mm. not receive what he wanted to give me. And, um, and my she, mom's whole entire life has changed since then. She's she gone. She read the Bible. She's, yeah. She would forget things. And now we're watching her teach mm. people uh, the, the scriptures in, in groups mm. and, and share and, and like never before remember things she couldn't remember. Yeah. And uh, it's been an amazing yeah. transformation. Let, healing, laying hands on sick people, seeing them That's recovered. Right. Like a documented miracle happened. She laid her hands on a girl who needed knee surgery. She had already had knee surgery, did something to the knee again, laid hands on that knee. And the girl flew to Maryland to see a doctor and the doctor said, there's nothing wrong with you. Mm. And my mom told her, when I lay hands on you, you're going to get to that doctor and they're going to tell you nothing's mm. wrong with you. My mother did that. And mm. I'm just like, this is the mm. life mm. of a spirit filled yeah. believer. Um, she has self-control she never had before and all these different things. So yeah. at that point, we're thinking, who else has demons? Mm. <laughs> you know, and um, from that point forward, we've seen probably 100 to 200 people set free mm. in mm. Alamance County in Alamance County, is that, yeah. I say that? Uh, in a small town, and 90% of them are church people. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And of course, it's not everything that's demonic. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of the time, mm -hmm. there is really taking the time to go through the gospel. That's right. To talk about what true repentance is, right. and, and the baptism, water, Holy Spirit, and really take the time to go through the gospel. That's right. But many people really need to learn, and that's that is right. just a reality. When we talk about, uh, I want to say something, because I know what I've seen is difficult when we talk about the wrong spirit in churches, that there have been different movements also in America where God has done amazing things, but there have also been a lot of things, wrong things. The way I see it is that when God is working, when the Holy Spirit is really there, mm -hmm. demonic things need to come up right. and they react. But in many places, deliverance have been thrown out at the back door. So when the manifestation happened, instead of discerning, hey, this is really a work of the Holy Spirit, but it's demonic manifestation we've seen because the Holy Spirit is working, let's cast it out. It ended up that that demonic manifestation become like, whoa, look, this is God, this is God, this is God. And nowadays people who are seeking it yeah. and want it and yeah. they're actually seeking demonic manifestation yeah, and right. it's scary that's right. um, and and it was our discern is that it's spreading very fast and i also know you have met somebody who went to another place a, a bible school and they came home with a lot of manifestation yeah. and can tell about that yeah so we had a friend that we had discipled for some time go to a ministry and they came home and they were doing these whoa and things when they would pray. And I'm like, are you okay? Because you were walking in the power of the Holy Spirit before you went there. Mm -hmm. And now you come back and you're doing that. I said, do I need to cast that out or is that just your flesh? And if it's your flesh, you need to stop it. Mm -hmm. And they never did it again. Mm -hmm. So we realized like, okay, this is a fleshly issue. Mm -hmm. And we had another friend go to the same place. And I said to them, 
please don't come back doing that. Because if mm. you do, mm. I will call you out of your flesh or I will cast <laughs> that thing out of you because you have to have discernment on, first of all, people laying hands on you don't receive everything they're saying. You just, you test those spirits. You test mm. the thing behind what you're doing. And just because you see someone else doing something and it looks good, doesn't mean you do it just for fun. And so, I, I, I would say when it comes to discerning, uh, th there is, there is uh, the spirit of God mm. and then the sp uh, spirit of uh, Satan, the demons. Mm. But then there is a big, big, big fleshly right. thing in the middle. That's right. Uh, because often what I've seen is like, it's very often in closed settings mm. where the manifestations happen. Mm. Where I would say God is as, 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 as near mm. outside, mm. but you don't see people staying in a, a shopping mall like, right. oh, oh, and, mm. and they're like, oh, I'm, uh, and start to <laughs> imagine right. life strong. Right. Right. You don't see that, you see it in settings. Mm. And, and what I saw for me, when you talk about drunk in the spirit, I was at meetings where, where people were drunk in the spirit many years ago, and I was an usher. I was helping carrying people out right. in the car. <laughs> and I was young and new in the faith, and I just love it. A lot of things, people was falling down all over the right. place, and I loved it. A lot of things happened. I did not know better. Right. And we carried people out in the car, and they were drunk in the spirit. Um, a few years later, God started to open my eyes for it. I started okay. to look back at the fruit and I saw what was missing. And, mm -hmm. and then I came to a meeting where there was a lot of those manifestations, but now I'm like, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't stand in it mm -hmm. anymore because I, I just saw things. Yeah. But at that meeting, a uh, drug addict came and she said something. Mm -hmm. She said, I know this. Mm -hmm. I, I read, we do this also. And like, what? Mm -hmm. So, so she had never been in church before. She come from outside. She come to a church where people are like, hey, and la laughing and rolling around on the floor and laughing. And she said, I know it. We do it often. I'm like, you cannot know it. You've never been in church before. Mm -hmm. No, we call it drive fixing. Like drive fixing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when we don't have money to take drugs, we mm -hmm. pretend we take drugs. So we do like this. <sighs> you. <sighs> and then. <sighs> And what they actually start, they start to hyperventilate, they start to breathe. Mm -hmm. If I do this enough time, I start to feel tingling in my hands. Right. And my hands start to go like this. And I start to feel a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And when I, she said that, it was like, mm -hmm. I had been in a church where we had 200 people running around hyperventilating. Because the way we had, we were like, right. we are drinking, come on, yeah. drinking, yeah. do you want it? And then the whole laughter thing, right. we'll bring it up. It, laughter thing, even in the world today, there's laughter clubs. Yeah. Right. You go in, there's nothing wrong with laughing. Right. And, and I, we, do, we did it in a summer house and vacation many years ago, we just, hey, let's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's nice to laugh. And, so, and at one time, we all start to laugh because you're so silly and we are laughing and I had so much pain in my stomach. I was laughing, I was walking and I couldn't be in a room because I heard them laugh no matter where oh, I was. Yeah, right. And I was laughing, laughing, laughing. There's nothing wrong with laughing. The problem is that we say, see, say that, hey, look, this is a proof that God is there. Sure. It's just laughing. Right. It's just hyperventilating <laughs> many often. <laughs> In many cases, sometimes it can be demonic, but there can also be people who fall down and sincere the Holy right. Spirit and gets them free. Um, and that is the thing right. that is discerning that, for me, that we, we saw that, we did that, That's and right. it was fleshly. When you can stop it, mm. just take control and stop it, then you know it's fleshly. It's flesh, yeah. When you cannot stop it, it's demonic. Right. You need help. You need That's somebody right. to pray over you. That's right. um, yeah. If I can say one thing, because people may ask about the whole the whole flesh thing, like maybe maybe what what's what's wrong with that? Um, I've noticed that even with what you're saying about the hyperventilating, uh, that I was even in some of those conferences mm -hmm. to where I seen these things happening and. Is as soon as I saw that, I felt the pressure for me to begin to experience that mm -hmm. because. Maybe if I didn't experience that, then I felt left out. Right. And so that's what actually caused me to start yeah. to, to kind of 
do this, put myself in this place to where I was okay. And, and then I would, you would, you start, mm -hmm. your, your heart rate goes up. You start to feel the tingling and, oh, there's God. Mm -hmm. and, and what it is, is just like the verse that you brought up in, in Corinthians. What he's saying is he's saying that, that um, I, I'm, I'm worried that, that just as the serpent deceived Eve, you have been deceived in your mind. So you've been led astray from the pure and simple devotion to Christ, mm -hmm. meaning your devotion has left Christ and gone elsewhere. So I found myself in those moments with my devotion to the on manifestations, manifestations instead of on Jesus Christ. That's and that's right. where deception yeah. comes in. And I think if you're not careful, it can start out as a flesh thing. Sure. But the devil realizes that person thinks this is God and he slips in and he displays himself as something that's like God and it's not. And then you become very susceptible to being deceived in a worse way than just by your flesh. And I say so. for me to, to, when I recognized that most of this was flesh, I started to, to ask questions. One time I came to a, a really dark period because I started to think, how much have been wrong? That's right. oh, yeah. have, have, but God really touched me at that time and, and I got transformed at that time. Was that also wrong? That's right. And it's so easy to reject everything, but yeah. it's not everything that's wrong. No, that's right. it's, yeah. And sometimes the Holy Spirit really come. Yeah. And now if you can hear sound, it's because we have a little baby. <laughs> they have a little baby downstairs, <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> uh, so, and that is the challenge mm -hmm. also when I do a video like this. I'm so, I, I really don't want you to reject Christ. Right. I don't want you to regret, reject the Holy Spirit. God is working. And you need him. You need him. <laughs> But I hope a video like this will, yeah. will just give you that thing like check in your spirit. That's right. Because the problem is that to, in those settings yeah. where we mm -hmm. see all of this often, there is a lot of preaching about don't be religious. Don't be religious. Don't put God in a box. Yeah. I've heard that. Don't put God in a box. Don't yeah. be religious. In a way that the normal discernment right. is okay, put away. That's but right. I would say... Of course, don't be religious, That's right. sure. but discern mm. as God has commanded us to do. That's right. and, 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 but, but don't reject the good thing in it and take the good things out of it mm. and, and then move from there and experience the presence of God where is something with self-control and, and, and you, you, yeah, you just know God is there. It's stronger than... If I feel a tingly, it's stronger than sure. if I feel something or falling down. It's just, you know, he's there. That's right. right. And uh, yeah. True faith. Yeah. That's right. What we you say in the end to, to people out there who, um, who are seeing this video and so on, and you can look in there. So what do you want to say to yeah. people? Um, I would come off of exactly what you ended with, and that is uh, don't fall into either ditch. Don't fall into the ditch where you reject mm. everything because you're so fearful of being deceived, but also uh, don't be so open and, and live without discernment to where you're receiving every spirit that wants to come in because that's where the enemy will take advantage and he will slip in like a snake and deceive you. So we need to bring a biblical discernment back into the body of Christ. Um, these videos are not to, to just reject everybody and and, and put everybody up and shame them. Mm -hmm. This is to say we need to wake up in the body of Christ. And if you're in those movements and you're witnessing those things, speak up. Mm -hmm. Begin to, to question those things uh, based on what the scriptures say and how they line up. And maybe that will welcome in discernment for the leaders of these movements. Um, and we'll be able to really be able to discern what is of God, what is of the Holy Spirit, and, and what is trying to sneak in and slip in and cause uh, deception in the church. Yeah. What yeah, I think the same thing for me is I'm very passionate to make sure that people are truly receiving the Holy Spirit and not just a false spirit or no spirit. Mm. Because the scripture is very clear to get to the end of this journey, mm. you have to be sealed for your inheritance that is waiting for you. Um, and Ephesians is very clear on that. And so a lot of times I'll minister with people and they're like, well, I don't, I have the spirit, but I'm like, tell me why, what demonstrates or what do you know, or what evidence do you have that you have him? And they have none. So don't reject him. You need him. Um, but also don't just open yourself up to anything and everything that's out there because it's not all him. Um, and if you need help with that, find people that are wise in that area and talk to them and discuss it and seek the right spirit and test it with the word of God. Yeah. 
And, and I would say just don't become a heretic hunter in oh, that way right. that you're just focus on all the wrong thing. Uh, focus on Christ, focus on the true, true lo- uh, life. But just have that, have that check in your spirit. Like if you are spirit filled, it's very often you, you just feel it. Right. And, and, and I believe that the sheep hear the voice of the Father, but, but we need somebody to check it and dare to speak it out. And I hope this is what this video will do. And then I'll say, go in and see the true gospel. The, the really, the, the, because what I think is most beautiful with what I see we are doing now is the fruit That's of the right. transformed yeah. life. The life uh, like what you saw with your mom and many other mm-hmm. people. If I look back at, at my years, in the charismatic movement many years ago, where I saw, we were in a crazy, like we were running around on the chairs and looking people mouth with gold, gold teeth and feathers and all of this. I, I had never at that time seen transforms life right. in the same volume we see now, yeah. where it goes so much That's deeper. Right. We see Marys get restored. That's we right. see people get set free and live a holy life and, and not uh, addicted to porn on the internet and not lying and stealing, but it's really a transformed life. And, and that makes me bold because right. I know Satan can copy many things, but he cannot copy holiness. Right. He cannot copy right. a transformed and life. that's the fruit that you test. That is the fruit. And you see that God is good because if someone's life is transformed, it's yeah. from God. Yeah. Yeah. So test the fruit. Yeah. Don't talk about yeah. what you think yeah. somebody's doing. Yeah. Look at the fruit yeah. that they're producing. And I would say when I talk about manifestation, for me, first time I really experienced God, it was like electricity. I felt it like that come to my body. I saw like a light, I fall to the floor. Oh. I stood up and I was changed yeah, forever. Right. Like right. it was a deep, 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 deep transformation. Right. I don't know what happened. I know I got the Holy Spirit. I don't know if I got delivered at the same time. I'm not against people experience a manifestation right. when they walk, stand up and walk out and are changed forever. Right. But I will also say after that, mm-hmm. there was a few years I still came in that where it became something you did for the sake of doing it more and and there was not the same transformation so i say what we are for is transformation true transformation right. and uh, i hope this video helped you otherwise we have other videos about it uh, see it just check it in your spirit and then share it of course but don't go in one of the ditches where you become a heretic hunter and go against everything and, re- and throw away the Holy Spirit and what God is really doing. But also not go to the other ditches where you don't have any discernment and just receive everything. Because we are called to experience the presence of God. We are called to discern. But we are also called to cast out demons. Right. So I would say next time you see a manifestation like this, like you saw with your mom, mm. in two seconds you are like, oh, our... Church tradition was saying, oh, it's the Holy Spirit. But now, like, hey, come out in the name of Jesus. And then it became clear what it is. And I would say, if people just take that, come out in the name of Jesus, you will very fast see what we are dealing with. That's right. God bless you. Amen. Bye-bye.